Now let's look at another one hop counter, but this time let's let's create one that goes both up and down. So an up will be defined as moving the one from the least significant bit up to the most significant bit, so that you can think of it as up means this way, and down means moving the one from the most significant bit to the least significant, so you can think of it as moving that way. So that's our task that we've been uh, given, so let's take a look at how we'll do this. First thing we're going to need is we're going to need an input, so let's use our name up, and we'll have an output that's again called or hot, and we simply have one clock that comes in, and on every rising edge of a clock, the output will be updated. And so let's go ahead and take advantage of the counter design approach, and what we'll do with the state diagram is we will uh, make a state for each output. So we'll call it hot 0, hot 1, hot 2, representing the three outputs that we're going to have. And then each output will have an output that is, that is that produces or gives us what we want. So we'll say that hot, the output in this state, is going to be 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. And then all that's left to do is transition between the states accordingly. So when up is equal to a 1, we will transition in a clockwise manner. And when up is equal to a 0, we will transition in a counterclockwise manner. So the state transition table uh, has to include the input now. So we're going to have the input up in here, and we'll list, I listed the current state uh, twice in here just to kind of complete the table. Notice that the output is only dependent on the current state. So notice that for hot 0, it's always 0, zero 1. For hot 1, it's always 0, 1, 0. For hot 2, it's 1, 0, 0. And that's a more type machine, and that's why I wrote the, the output values within the state circle. So then when we go to encode the states, we want to use state encoded outputs. So we want to assign a state code that matches the desired output for each state. So hot 0, I want to assign it 0, zero 1. And hot 1, I want to assign it 0, 1, 0. And hot 2, I want to assign it 1, 0, 0. So when I get my state codes down here, this is how I assign them. And then let's look at the final state transition table. So now I need three state variables, or state variable names for current state. So I'm going to call them q2 cur, q1 cur, q0 cur. And over here I'm going to call this q2 next, q1 next, and q0 next. And I need 3D flip-flops, one for each of the bits within here. So then I list everything in here, and I list all of the codes. I just pop these, this, this encoded, uh, or the state encoded codes into the table. And I complete the table, and I have all the values that I need. So now I need to think about the next step, which is synthesizing the next state logic. And what is the next state logic? It is combinational logic circuits to produce Q2 next, Q1 next, and Q0 next. So I need three combinational logic circuits. So I'll go ahead and do three K-maps. However, what are the inputs into the K-maps? Well, in this situation, there's actually four inputs. There's the three current state codes, but there's also an input called up. So we're going to have four input k-maps. Notice, though, for the four inputs, you know, that could, there could be 16 possible codes. There's only two, four, six codes listed here. So we're going to have another k-map situation where we could use don't cares to minimize the logic. So let's go ahead and synthesize q2 next, q1 next, and q0 next, and see what logic we end up with. Okay, so we come along and... Here's what we get. So I come in here and I put, I put those values, Q2 next, into the K-map. Notice that I have a whole bunch of don't cares. I put Q1 value, Q1 next values into the K-map. Notice I have a bunch of don't cares. Same thing with Q0 next, a bunch of don't cares. And then I have Q2 cur, Q1 cur, Q0 cur, and up as the inputs. So for these logic expressions, I take advantage of the K-maps, or the don't cares, and I form a sum of products logic expression for all three, and I come up with a reasonably small circuit here for Q0 next, Q1 next, and Q2 two next. And then we go to the output logic synthesis, which is simply nothing more than the current state. And that's because I chose the state encoded output technique. And that means that my outputs are simply wired to the state code, or the current state variables, or the Q outputs of the default flops. So when I take this whole thing and I put it together, and I want to look at the logic diagram, it looks something like this. 
it looks like 3D flip-flops. Okay. Q2 cur, Q1 cur, and Q0 cur. So that's how I assign which D flip-flop is holding which bit of the state code. And then I have a sum of products logic expression for each of the next state variables. So Q2 next is created from this combination logic circuit. Q1 next is created from this combination logic circuit. Q0 next is created from this combination logic circuit. So that's my next state logic. And then finally, my output logic is nothing more than the three bit vector hot is driven from the three state variable codes for current state. So that's the logic expression. And then if you look at how this works, if you look at the timing diagram, when up is asserted, it simply counts up, which we defined as 0, 0, 1, and then 0, 1, 0, and then 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So the, the 1, the 1 hot, is moving from the least significant position over to the more significant. And then when it goes down, it moves from the, the most significant to the less significant, least significant. So it moves the other way. So that is a 3-bit, 1 hot, up-down counter.